HDRs can be used on virtually any 3D application to really accentuate your lighting situation and make any project really pop. What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how we can make a 360 degree HDR using only After Effects and no third party plugins. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as you can see right here, I have After Effects 2023 open, but you can use previous versions to do this as well. So I'm gonna get started by coming over here on my left hand side. And if you look right here under your project box, you should see this little icon down here. This is gonna be how you open up your composition. So I'm gonna left click on this and where it says composition position name i'm just going to name this one hdr tutorial something like that and then for my width and my height i'm just going to do 4096 about 4096 that's essentially 4k there and then down here for duration i'm just going to do one frame because we're just going to send out a single image and for my frame rate it doesn't really matter because we're just doing an image so i'm going to click ok and now inside of our viewport here we can see that we have our blank slate so i'm going to come down here to my timeline i'm going to right click I'm going to click on new and then I'm going to click on solid and I'm just going to leave this as a black solid because we're going to make a gradient with our tools here. So I'm going to click OK and then over here on my right hand side where it says effects and presets. I'm just going to scroll down here and look for immersive video. Now these tools are typically used for anything involving 360 VR, but what we can do is make a 360 image here and then export this out as an HDR to use in any 3D application. And so to do that, I'm gonna come over here to where it says VR color gradients, and I'm just gonna left click and drag it onto my solid here. And then depending on your setup, it's probably gonna look different than mine, but you just wanna look for the effects panel. And if you look inside the viewport, you can see that we have eight different points here. Now this is how we're gonna build our gradient. And if you come over here to our effects panel, where it says points, I'm probably gonna start off with maybe like five, just kind of make it a little bit more simplified. And then right here where it says points, I'm just gonna scroll this down right here. And then I'm just gonna start picking some colors. So maybe let's do something in like a bluish hue. So maybe something along there that's like baby blue. And you can see that it changed this color right here. And if I come to my color picker, I'm gonna left click and select that as well. And so I'm just gonna do this for a couple of them. Maybe on this yellow one, I do the color picker, but then I go back into my color gradient and maybe let's make this a different shade of blue. So something around there, and maybe we could just take this point and drag it down. And then this one is already blue, but maybe I select it here just to make it a little bit more even. And then from here, you could just come and move these points in here until you find something that's to your liking. And you can always add more points as well. Like if I come over here to where it says point number, maybe I pick on six and just add another one right in here. Maybe I just pick like another shade of blue. So you have like a whole variety of different options that you have here at your fingertips, just to kind of come in here and make a nice gradient pattern here like so. And then if you wanna blend this in a little bit more, where it says gradient power, right now by default is at 50. If I go up to 100, it's gonna make it really sharp here. But if you go further down, maybe like 30, you're gonna see that's gonna blend it a lot more. So let's see what 20 looks like. Somewhere around there, you can see that we're starting to see like our highlight spots here. Let's even it out, maybe 25. No, maybe let's go back to 30. And this is just gonna be something that's to your liking. And so once you're happy with how you have your gradients all set up here, the next step from here is to export this out as an HDR. So I'm just gonna come down here in my timeline. If you have multiple images here, you just need to make sure that you click on one layer. And then you're gonna come up here to composition and where it says same frame as, we wanna click on file. And then that's gonna open up your output frame window in which I'm just gonna leave this one as HDR tutorial here. Don't worry about what it says for save frame type as, it's gonna be changed once we do some settings in here. So again, I'm just gonna save this to my desktop for now, click save. And then inside of our render queue window, right here where it says render settings, I'm probably gonna do best settings right here. And then where it says output module, you wanna click on this right here. And this is where you could change out your format. So right here where it says format, I'm actually gonna come down here to where it says radiant sequence and I'm gonna left click on this and then I'm gonna leave everything else as default here and I'm just gonna click okay. And now you'll notice that it says output HDR as a dot HDR right here. So that's gonna give us our HDR file that we want. If I left click on this arrow and just do comp name, it's gonna take away all those numbers right there. And then another important thing is before we hit render on this, I have this as a 32-bit composition, so that's gonna be important when you render out your HDR. You wanna have it at the highest bit rate as possible, which is gonna be 32 in this case. So from here, we're just gonna click render, and we're gonna bring this into other 3D applications as well. 
And so to kick off how we could use these HDRs in different 3D applications, let's start with Cinema 4D. So as you can see right here, I have Cinema 4D 2023 opened up, but again, this can be used in previous versions as well as we're gonna be using Redshift. And so what I'm gonna do is actually just drop an asset in here. So if I come over here on my right hand side where it says asset browser, I'm gonna click on new content and I'm just gonna select something in here. There's something that I downloaded that looked pretty cool is this glass jar and it has like some macaroni noodles in there. So I'm actually just gonna double click on this. Then I'm gonna come back over to objects, come down here to coordinates. Then I'm just gonna make this a little bit larger. So let's scale this up by 10. And if it comes in black inside of your scene, that's because this is actually textured with Redshift already. So in order to be able to see the textures, I'm gonna click on this right here. That's gonna bring up our render settings and where it says render, you just wanna come over here to Redshift and then you should automatically see your different textures kind of pop in there. So my next step from here is I'm basically going to come over here to where I had rear shift window and I'm going to come down to lights and I'm just going to add a dome light. And this is how we're going to be able to add our HDR. So under a dome light right here, if I come down to objects and come over here to textures, which you can see right here, there's a folder on the right hand side. I'm just going to left click on this and then I'm just going to take that HDR that we just created and I'm going to click open. And now you can see that HDR engulf our scene here. So maybe on our intensity, instead of having it at one, maybe just bump it up to two and then let's come through the viewport and just see what it looks like. So I'm gonna come back over to Redshift. I'm gonna come over to Redshift Render View and I'm just gonna left click on this and then I'm gonna click play. I'm gonna put it on buckets and let's see what it looks like here. So before I let this finish, you can kind of see how our scene is only being lit by this HDR that's in here. That's looking pretty cool, but if you want to accentuate this a little bit more, let's come over to Redshift. Let's come down and maybe let's add like an infinite light here. And I can even bump this up to two as well. And then let's look at the results that we're going to get from this. So I can already see some of the specular highlights starting to hit off the shell there and everything. Maybe come over to dome light. Let's drop the intensity down to one and let's see how it is. But basically this is how I render a lot of my scenes. I'll add an HDR in there just to accentuate it a little bit. And then I go on to actually lighten my scene the way that you typically would. And so you can see that we're having hues of blue kind of illuminate our shell here and everything and our different macaroni shells, but we're still being able to affect the lighting and everything, which is cool. But now that we saw how we could add this inside of Redshift, let's open up another application like Unreal Engine 5 and see how we can use the same HDR to light our scene. So now we're inside of Unreal Engine 5.1. As you can see here, I have a blank scene, but I do have an object in the scene. And we're gonna start by lighting this with the HDR that we created in After Effects. And so to get started, I'm actually gonna come over here to my Windows Explorer. I'm just gonna drag it into my scene here. And I'm gonna take that HDR. I'm just gonna left click and drag it into my content browser exit that out and now you can see we have the hdr in here in which i have some previous hdrs that i made with the same method as well just so we could do some testing out and so to get started let me actually move this down a little bit and i'm going to come up here where we have this cube with the plus sign i'm going to left click i'm going to come down here to lights and i'm going to add the hdr backdrop like so and now you can see it comes with a default HDR, but we can actually swap this out with some of the HDRs that we made in After Effects. But if you don't see the HDR backdrop inside of your lighting, the way that you get it was you come up to edit, then come down to plugins, and then you would just type in HDR. And then you should see HDR backdrop right there. You might make sure you check mark that on and you should be good to go. So moving on, I'm gonna come over here in my details panel, make sure I have my backdrop selected. And then right here under backdrop, under cube map, you should see that HDR that's in currently engulfing our scene. All you have to do is left click and drag your HDR into here. And now our scene is being lit by that HDR. And we have similar controls that we did inside of Redshift there. So we have intensity. We're gonna actually drop this up maybe to like four, something like that. You can see it's starting to light the scene. We can actually come over here, just drag and drop another gradient in here, get a different type of mood and look in there like so. Drag this yellow one in here which is looking really cool. And just like in Redshift, we can actually add like a sunlight in here to also help with the lighting. So if I come over here, click on this cube again, come down here to lights, let's do directional light. And you can see now we have our directional light controlling our scene as well. So if I come over here to intensity, drop this down to maybe like three, just scroll around here instead of my rotational tools as well. You can see that we're having it lit by the HDR, but at the same time, lit by a directional light as well. So this is a workflow that I often use a lot whenever I'm working inside of my 3D applications. 
So you can use this practically in any 3D application. That's just two examples there. But if this did help you out and you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Click on any of these videos that you might see linked around me if something there catches your eye. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. i see you soon. Take care.